This is the 2024 HP Chromebook Plus 14A. It's a 14 inch clamshell Chromebook Plus model with the Intel Core i3 M305 processor, 8 gig of RAM and 256 gig of universal flash storage. I've got mixed feelings about this one, but as always, there are pros and cons. HP look to have done something here that the likes of Lenovo and Acer haven't, in that they've made a Chromebook in their most basic range, identified by the A in the 14A model name, a Chromebook Plus model. So this means we've got a well-spec Chromebook in terms of performance, but perhaps with a more compromised physical build. Despite that, it still benefits from the Chromebook Plus software, which now includes features like Help Me Read, the new recorder app, additional camera and audio controls, and more. It's a Chromebook I unboxed and gave my initial impressions and overview of back at the start of September. I've had a good amount of time using it to bring you this review. I'll link you to my unboxing video at the end of this one. In that video, I give a full overview of the spec, the price I paid, and I look at it again against one of its main rivals, the Acer Chromebook Plus 514, another 14 inch Chromebook Plus model with the same Intel Core i3 N305 processor. It's also got the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 3i Chromebook Plus to compete against, which I've also shown on the channel. And those two in particular have shaped the way I look at this one, both good and bad. First off on the build quality, since my unboxing, I found you can in fact click the trackpad with the lid shut and when it's open as well, Unfortunately, more similar to the 14A model with the Intel M100 or N200 processor than I'd first hoped. Not a great sign, but it's also not a way you'd necessarily handle this day to day. Whatever plastic HP have used in the full plastic build doesn't help, but on the plus side, HP have kept the overall footprint relatively small and the weight decent at 1.40 kg, about 3.08 pound, which does bring it in slightly under the competition I mentioned. Ports are what I'd call minimalistic, but the width of the Chrome book is also relatively slim so there is a pro to that. You still get dual USB-C which I'm personally more than happy with but not having either an HDMI port or a micro SD card slot felt like I was missing on something. For display out I tend to use a USB-C dock or hub when I'm at my desk or out and extending the display over my two full HD monitors whilst using the Chromebook's display as a third worked well. The keyboard deck packs in a lot and looks to prioritize media. They made sure there was room for upward firing speakers that get pretty loud and with quality that for laptop speakers is fine. And HP also included a lot of function keys, including the media playback pause button. Here's a quick sample from those speakers. In order to keep all of that functionality built into the speaker deck and the relatively small device footprint, say compared to the Acer Chromebook Plus 514 shown on screen against it now, the keyboard keys and the layout on the HP have some compromises, with overall slightly smaller function keys in the top row and the more US style return key, which for me took a little bit of getting used to. The text on each keycap is also printed or layered on top of the key, so you can feel that too, rather than a smooth keycap. However, once I start to use the keyboard I could be fairly accurate without issue. The keys have a shorter travel without much resistance to them and don't really give much in terms of feedback. The touchpad is basic and whilst a reasonable size feels and sounds a little cheap but was well seated and seemed fine for clicks, taps and gestures on the whole. The Full HD IPS non-touch display was a nice surprise, one of the strong points of this Chromebook. With a 16 by 9 ratio and a matte finish, it's decently bright at acclaimed 300 nits, covers 62.5% of the sRGB colour space and generally had good viewing angles. At the top of the screen you've got the Full HD webcam with privacy slider. The quality was generally okay okay but perhaps a bit too bright and overexposed even with some of the extra lighting controls that come with Chromebook Plus. Performance as we've come to expect with the Core i3 N305 processor and 8GB of low power DDR5 RAM was excellent in Chrome OS and some light Android gaming was no problem at all. I did notice the fans kicking in a little more often on this HP but they're also pretty quiet. Perhaps they're needed more for cooling related to that slightly thinner design of the laptop chassis. There's a ventilation grill across the bottom of the Chromebook but even using it on my lap the heat was never excessive. I also found battery life to be decent but that will depend on your use. I was getting close to 8 hours before feeling the need to charge rather than the claimed 11 hours. I was able to recharge the battery from 0 to around 50% in 45 minutes as HP claimed. You may have seen my recent unboxing of the Lenovo 14e Gen 3 Chromebook which I'm showing against the HP Chromebook Plus 14a here. As I explained in that video for all intents and purposes that Lenovo is essentially the same chassis 
chassis and board as the Lenovo Slim 3i Chromebook Plus. If you want to check out that Lenovo or the Acer Chromebook Plus 514, the competition to this HP, those videos are on the left for you now. Or if you want to know more about this HP Chromebook Plus 14a and haven't watched my unboxing and full overview, that video is on the right. It also includes a bit of a visual comparison against the Acer Chromebook Plus 514.